The next thing that I'm going to show you is uh, Lewis structures and structural formulas. And I'm just going to draw them on the board. Um, a Lewis structure looks like this. How many valence electrons does hydrogen have? Two. No. No. One. One. How many would it like? Two. It would like to, but it only has one. So I have two hydrogen atoms. Each of them has one electron. So one hy hydrogen atom, I see the other one up across the room and notices, hey, one over there only has one electron too. Maybe it would like to share. <laughs> so they move in over to each other, and they indeed share those two electrons. Now, when you look at each hydrogen by itself, this hydrogen has two electrons that can be buzzing around it at any given time. This hydrogen has two electrons that can be buzzing around it at any given time. The octet rule has been fulfilled for hydrogen. So a Lewis structure looks like that. The shared pair is written in between the two element symbols. A structural formula looks like this. Very similar, with one difference. This dash, in chemistry, when we draw structures, represents a shared pair of electrons. Okay? So fluorine, kind of a similar situation to hydrogen. Each fluorine has seven covalent bonds. I'm sorry, let me, re let me reword that. Each fluorine has seven valence electrons. And again, one potential bonding site, same thing can happen. One fluorine eyes up another fluorine across the room. It starts like the start of a good joke. <laughs> or a bad joke. Or a bad joke. Um, either way, one potential bonding site um, fluorine is a diatomic molecule uh, naturally, and it's because there's this natural occurrence that happens where these two electrons do get shared. So again, I will put those two electrons in that spot, representing um, being shared between the two, but I am also going to put the other electrons on so that you can see fluorine. This fluorine has eight valence electrons, and this fluorine has eight valence electrons. So a structural formula, again, looks similar. Wherever I have a shared pair, I represent it with a dash. This time I do have to put the dots on. And the Lewis structure, structural formula looks like that. I say Lewis structure, structural formula, I use them interchangeably all the time, but this is typically what I mean. When we draw um, structural formulas, we put the dashes in for um, to represent that shared pair of electrons. Now, I have a little note here. Note the unshared pairs or lone pairs. That sounds awfully lonely, but they're really not. They're just really not involved so much. So I would like you just to cut, circle a pair of lone pair electrons, draw a line to it and with an arrow, and let's say that we have six pairs, we have six lone pairs on this particular molecule. And we have one shared pair. So I'm going to teach you how to do Lewis structures with more complicated scenarios. Tomorrow we get to practice. Here's a set of instructions. If you follow this set of instructions and don't try to get wild and crazy and confident, you can get confident. But don't get overconfident that it makes you wild and crazy. Um, if you follow these instructions, you will succeed at this. And the first several that we're going to do are pretty easy, but they get a little bit more complicated. So. It says, draw the Lewis structure of iodomethane, which is CH3I. Baby steps. First step, I'm going to draw the Lewis structure of iodomethane. 
first thing that we're going to do is write the electron dot notation for each atom in the molecule. So I have one carbon, I have three hydrogens, and I have an iodine. All right, electron dot notation is where I write my valence electron. Carbon group 14 has? Four. 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 Each hydrogen has? One. One. Iodine group 17. Seven. single valence electron that these atoms are contributing. So all I need to do is count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 electrons. Easy peasy. All right. Now I have this special location here that I always write the number of um, electrons and I like to call it my electron bank because for this compound which has one carbon, three hydrogens, and one iodine, there are 14 total valence electrons that are going to be contributing to any sort of bonding that takes place. No more, no less. So the next step says to arrange the atoms to form a skeleton structure for the molecule. If carbon is present, it is the central atom. Well, indeed it is present, so we're gonna put that in the middle. It says here, then connect the atoms by electron pair bonds. We're going to represent those with dashes. So we always build around a central atom, and typically it'll be four locations, one to the right, one to the left, one up, and one down. So I'm going to connect hydrogen there, there, and there. I could have easily put it there. It does not matter. And I'm going to put my iodine right there. So here's my question for you. If each one of these represents an electron pair, how many electrons did I just use from my 14 in the bank? Electron pair, I've used eight, right? So how many do I have left? I have six left. I just used eight so that I could make the skeletal arrangement. This is always your first step. Again, don't start worrying about getting fancy at this point, just follow the steps. The next thing says add unshared pairs of electrons so that each atom is satisfied by the octet rule. I'm just going to rewrite that up here. I started with 14 electrons. I used 8 electrons, which means that I have 6 electrons left. Now, why will I not add them to hydrogen? Because hydrogen only has one. Hydrogen only has one electron and it's stable with two. It already is in a bond that satisfies the octet rule. So I'm gonna add them. Now when I add them, I'm gonna add them as, as pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Best case scenario is when you're all done at this point. I have used up all of my electrons, all 14, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Great. Each atom is satisfied by the octet rule. Each hydrogen has two. This carbon has eight. This iodine has two, four, six, eight. So the octet rule is fulfilled. I have put all of my electrons on there. This one is finished. So we'll try these together going through the same set of steps each time. Ammonia has five valence electrons, or nitrogen, um, one nitrogen and ammonia has five valence electrons, group 15. Eventually you guys will have these memorized because you'll use them so much. Each hydrogen has one. So I have a total of eight electrons. I'll put that up in my little bank. Uh, does it make sense to you which is going to be the central atom here? Yeah. Usually it does. It usually makes sense. So indeed it is nitrogen, or nitrogen is the center. I've connected with electron pair bonds, that dash, representing two electrons each, so I've used up six. 
and that leaves me two electrons to distribute on any remaining locations that are open. It just so happens that nitrogen needs to, and voila. Oh, let me just All right. Hydrogen sulfide. Each hydrogen Six. has one valence electron. Sulfur is in group 16, it has six. Yeah, so I have a total of eight electrons. I'll put sulfur in the middle, put a hydrogen there. I'm gonna put a hydrogen there just for giggles to show you that I can. I can put it there, I can put it there, I can put it there. It doesn't matter. All right, I've just used up four of my electrons, which leaves me with four left. Put them on as pairs, one, two, three, four, and it's perfect. The hydrogen has two, each one. The sulfur has eight. The octet rule has been fulfilled. Alex. Does the electrons that we have the four left, does it matter which side of the sulfur they go on? It does not. But you want to use these four locations, like the, the north, south, east, west. So I could have easily done this. So you just want you just kind of want it like surrounded kind of thing. Yeah, you want it surrounded so that top, bottom, left, right are the spaces where those electron pairs are going. You don't want to just you know start getting crazy and say oh like that. Yeah, let's not do that. Um, bromine has 14 total valence electrons, and if I connect each with a single bond. Well, if I connect the two with a single bond, if you ever have two things, you just do those two things. And I've used up two, so that gives me 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And it works out. Now, all of these worked out nicely, and this is desirable. When it works out this great, it's good because you don't have to go any further, but it's kind of like a puzzle. And sometimes things get a little bit more complicated like very shortly. Oh, man. Wait for it. Let's try these. Oxygen. See how I just did bromine? Bromine attached to a bromine. I want you to try the same thing. Same set of steps with oxygen. Are you encountering any problems? Oh, yeah. I see some perplexed looks on your face. I got majorly tongue twisted just there. All right, so you're encountering some problems. Let, let, let me teach you what to do about it. Each oxygen has six for a total of 12 electrons. So same steps, I'm going to connect the two of them with a single bond. I'm gonna subtract those from my tally. That means I have 10 electrons left. I'm going to start adding them on as electron pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. It would be really handy if I could do that, but I can't because that would give me too many electrons. I don't have that many electrons to work with. And there are not enough valence electrons. We need to satisfy the octet rule using double and triple bonds. So what I do is say, not enough. So I'm gonna take one of these pairs right here. I'm gonna take this pair right here. And I'm gonna bring it right there. See, I just did that. It's no longer there, it's now there. Hmm. I still have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons. Now this oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons. And this oxygen also has two, four, six, eight electrons. So multiple bonds. That's called a double bond. There are four electrons now being shared between those two oxygens. And that's how oxygen exists. All right, let me connect with the double bond. I have ten total electrons. Um, let me rephrase that. Let me connect with a single bond. I've used up two, which gives me eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, here, 
obviously that tech will not be satisfied. So I'm just going to see if I can make it work by putting a double bond in there. 2, 4, 6, 8. It is there. 2, 4, 6 there. So that wasn't quite enough. So I'm going to take another pair and put it in there. And now I do have a triple bond. So you guys get to try these. Let's look at the methanol. CH4 or CH2O. So carbon has four valence electrons. Each hydrogen has two. Oxygen has six. So my total four, five, six plus six is 12 electrons. If carbon is there, it is in the middle. And again, we want to arrange around the center um, in those four positions if possible. So I'm going to put a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, and an oxygen there. I have just used six electrons, which leaves six left. Again, I always start from the outside when I'm adding my electron pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if everything goes well, it works out so that the octet rule is fulfilled, but you will see here that carbon only has six and it needs eight, which means I have to take one of these unshared pairs and share it like that. And that gives me the Lewis structure for that substance. Carbon dioxide, um, rather than let, uh, writing the dot structures, I will show you another method. Um, I will typically just write the number of valence electrons above each thing. So carbon has four valence electrons, it's in group 14. Each oxygen has six. So I have 16 electrons. Carbon is in the middle, so I'm going to attach my two oxygens using a single bond. I used up four electrons, which gives me 12. I start putting on my electron pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Which at a first glance looks pretty good. Until I look at carbon and realize that it only has four valence electrons and it should have how many? Eight. Again, if I don't have enough, I need to take some of my unshared pairs, my lone pairs, and turn them into shared electrons. So that gives me six, but it's not quite enough. So I need to do that one more time. And it looks like that. Hydrogen cyanide. has one valence electron, carbon has four, nitrogen has five, so I have a total of ten electrons. Put carbon in the middle, attach my other atoms with single bonds. I've just used up four electrons, so I have six left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, I only, I have hydrogen has two, that's good. Nitrogen has eight, that's good. The carbon is not being fulfilled right now. So when I don't have enough electrons, I'm gonna take my lone pairs, let's try this. Um, that gives me six, but it's not quite enough. So I have to take this one and do that. You will never ever have a double or triple bond going to a hydrogen ever because it is fulfilled with two electrons. It doesn't have more than one bonding site to contribute.